Good day and welcome to today's class. Today's class is a continuation of our previous class on SS1 for the mathematics. At the last class, I explained to you the curriculum of SS1, which is a collection of all the topics required of you as a learner to learn in SS1. I gave you a rundown of all the topics and thereafter we had to break it down into terms whereby it is expected that you are supposed to learn approximately six broad topics in each of the terms. So we shall take them sequentially, beginning with the theme pure mathematics and the first topic under pure mathematics is set. So we shall begin with the topic set. And in today's class, while treating set, we shall take note of the following objectives. So at the end of the class or at the end of the course, you should be able to have learned all of this. So the objective includes one, definition of a set. You should be able to define a set. Two, representation in set notation. Three, says distinguish the types of sets. Four, you should be able to carry out set operations. And five, draw and use Venn diagrams in solving real life problems. This we refer to as the application of sets. For the purpose of today's class, we shall consider the first two objectives, which is definition or define a set and representation in set notation. Subsequently, we shall take other objectives. So what is a set? We are all familiar with the following collections. A collection of books in a public library, a collection of tools in a carpentry shop, a collection of historical artifacts in a museum, etc. Basically, any clearly defined collection of things, objects, or numbers constitutes a set. You may refer to it like a set of students in a class. Of recent, so many of you are graduating from one class to the other. Some are graduating from one college to the other. For those in primary six or those that just graduated from SS3, you are referred to as a set. Class of 2004, 2024 sets. So you are referred to as a set. Why? Because you people are said to be a clearly defined number of persons. You all, majority of you came in in SS, just as one together, taught by the same teacher, in the same class, all the positive and negative things you all learned in the same class. And at the same time, you will discover that the bond between you and your classmates seems to be more than the bond between you and either your seniors or your juniors. Sometimes most of you are even anxious to be in school because you, 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 you love the presence of your, of, your, of your classmates. Now you are referred to as a set because you have a clearly defined objective. While I was growing up, we go out every evening to play football. And when we are about to play, we do form sets. Now, it is the responsibility of a set to ensure that that ball is played into the opposition's net. Now, you have a collective objective, you have a goal. So a clearly defined goal of a group of objects defines a set. If you have an opponent or if you have a member of that set that plays against you, you don't regard him or her as a team player or as a member of that club, of, of that set because he's tend to be an opponent. So he's playing against you. So any clearly defined collection of things, objects, or numbers constitute a set. So a collection of books in a public library, for example, constitutes a set. Each member of a set is called an element of the set. So, we shall use capital letters X, Y, Z to denote sets. 
while small letters x y z will be used to denote the element of a set so if you are a member of that set in set representation we use the smaller letters in representing elements of the set for example i graduated in 2006 from my secondary and we are referred to as class of 2006 so many of you are just graduating in 2024 you are referred to as class of 2024 sets because it is expected that the curriculum a covers is the same thing as b so you are referred to as a set so in representing a set class 2006 we may use capital letter but in identifying members of that set or in representing members of that set we make use of small letters xyz to denote them when an element x belonging to a set x we write it as this and say that x is an element or a member of set x so this denotes or this can be said to represent an element of telling you that small letter x is an element of the set big letter x if x is not a member or an element of big capital x we write it as this so this we read it as x does not belong to the set capital x example one that if x is a set of all prime numbers and p is equal to seven then p is said to be an element or a member of x but if a is equal to six then a is not an element of set x now why is six not a member or an element of the set x remember in our gss we define prime numbers to be numbers that have only two factors one and itself so if you look at seven we said seven is a member of that class because seven clearly defines prime number seven is a number that has only two factors one and seven so there is no other smaller number that can divide seven without a remainder excluding one and seven itself while six is said not to be a prime number because six has more than two factors that can divide six without remainder we have numbers like one two three and six itself so this is the reason why we say six is not an element of prime numbers just like that opponent or that team player that plays against his members on representation of a set we say a set is completely specified in the following ways these are ways you can specify a set a by listing all the elements of the set by listing we can take it for example that a into the braces two three five and seven that the set consisting of prime numbers between one and ten so this is by listing you can list out all the elements of that set for example those of us that graduated from f4 secondary school macaulay in 2006 we can be spec uh, specified by listing the names of all the students upon graduation we had a booklet where all our names were entered as members of set 2006 so that is an example of listening b we say by describing the elements of the set by describing the elements of the set we have an example that b is the set of all all numbers between 1 and 10 describes the element of the set so by saying you can just give it as a statement that b is the set of all all numbers between 1 and 10 same thing with all members 
all those that graduated in 2006 from Air Force Secondary School Macquarie come out. You have been able to describe that collection of sets as against you calling our names. So this is another way you can represent a set. C, we said by enclosing within braces any general element with a clearly defined property that can be associated with the set. The symbol is denotes the set of. So we have that C is the set of all positive integers x such that 1 is less than x and x is less than or equal to 12. So it's read as the set of all positive integers x such that x is greater than 1 but less than or equal to 12. So these are the ways you can represent a set. That brings us to the end of today's class. In today's class, we have been able to define a set as well as represent set in set notation. Where we define a set as basically a collection of clearly defined objects. So any group of objects that is clearly defined is said to be a set. And we say in representation of a set, sets are represented using capital letters, while members of the set, which refer to as the elements of the set, can be represented using small letters. So these are ways you can denote a set as well as elements of the set. And I showed you how to write it that A belongs to a set X or B is not an element of set X. Kindly like my videos as you watch. While I recommend that you subscribe to my channel if you are yet to do so, and also turn on the notification bell so as to be notified whenever a new video is being uploaded. You can also use the comment section to interact with me on areas that are still difficult for you to understand. While I recommend you share the link with your friends and families so that they can also benefit from our daily classes. See you in our next class where we shall take the third objective which says distinguish the types of sets. Goodbye and do have a nice day.